of the script, seeing it as sequential, seeing it, seeing some images as more important than others, and all that. All the judgment is where the the guilt comes in. It seems in the world like it seems as if persons let other persons down. It seems as if persons do things, bad things, to other persons. And there seems to be a sense of guilt from doing the wrong things or not doing the right things. And the guilt has nothing at all to do with with behavior and it has nothing at all to do with what happens in the world. Much to much to the surprise, when you start to look it back, the guilt comes from ordering the thoughts that produce the world. The guilt comes from the belief that I can order my own thoughts. If those thoughts were real, then guilt would be justified and inevitable. The atonement and the miracle shows that they're not real. And that's why it, it alleviates the guilt. You can see where, if you really believe that guilt was in terms of behavior, like that movie we saw, When a Man Loves a Woman, you know, where there was a lot of things that came up about seeing your children, you know, at the end when he was they were going off to another place, and he said, I'll call you every day, you know, and this and that. It seems like, it seems like if you could do enough of the right things, you can alleviate and overcome guilt in that sense. I remember a Chicago song, a Peter Cetera, I will make it up to you, I promise you. <laughs> kind of a deal. Yeah. It's impossible. It's impossible to do enough of the right thing or make it up in a form sense. A tone for it. Right. There's, it's impossible. You know, that's the whole thing. A lot of times when and if there's a marriage and one or other of the person seem to be unfaithful, you know, it's like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm so, so sorry. It will never, ever happen again. What can I do, you know, as a fury? <laughs> what can I do to make it up to you? Is there anything? Tell me, I'll do anything, anything, please. Don't leave me and this and that. As if somehow the atoning can take place out there on the screen. What a glorious thing to realize. It can't. Oh, good. I'll stop trying. <laughs> but it is, the guilt is coming about from trying to order and judge the world. All the, all the preferences, all the hierarchies, all the um, things that I feel are the important stuff and the indifferent stuff and the unimportant stuff, all the ordering of thoughts, that's where the guilt coming from. So then it makes sense to watch my mind and to try to say, I, instead of ordering my own thoughts, instead of ranking things and making hierarchies in my mind, I would rather have a miracle, which just sees illusions as illusions, which has no order of difficulty because it doesn't seem one situation is any different than another. I mean, that's like a real alternative to ask for. That will bring about the end of guilt. So in an example that you gave of infidelity, the ordering of thoughts is not specifically related to infidelity. It's just ordering of thoughts in a general sort of way. Yes. It seems like in this world there are heinous crimes you know, people that are on death row and everything that feel this tremendous sense of remorse and guilt as if there will never be a way out of it. They've done it. They've actually committed this heinous crime. And when you get to the Course, the Course is not only saying that there's no difference between you know, shoplifting and mass murdering, but there's no difference between mass murdering and thinking about mass murdering. There's no difference between mass murdering and thinking about shoplifting. We want to get mass murder, shoplifting, thinking about mass murder, thinking about shoplifting. There's no difference between thinking about shoplifting and and acting out and, and mass murdering because it's all 
there's still an ordering of thoughts that are going on. It's not like a continuum with the well, that then works. Then, in that perspective, there's no difference between committing mass murder and thinking about going skiing. I mean, it doesn't have to be in our moral right. code. It's still ordering of thoughts. Yeah. I like skiing. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. That's what we were getting at like. this morning, because Rhonda brought up the point. She said she wanted to go into this idea of private minds and private thoughts. She, she was saying it has to be more than just keeping a secret from someone. <laughs> Did she call a private session for that? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's a regular session. But it's the whole idea is that everything that you perceive through the body's eyes is, a, is the private world. <laughs> the cosmos, as you constructed it, is a private world. You know? And it's, so it's not about a personal thing of keeping a secret from somebody else. In a personal sense, it goes much, 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 much beyond that. And it's neat when you can just start to say, okay, I'm, I see what I'm going to have to look at here. I'm not going to have to try to, to um, make amends and make it up to everybody I've ever hurt in my life in a form sense. You know, I, but I am going to have to change my perception. I'm going to have to to let go of my thinking that's producing, seeming to produce this this world. It's a mind overhaul, to use our, our title of that pamphlet that <laughs> we're working on. This is how all illusions came about. The one who makes them does not see himself as making them, and their reality does not depend on him. Whatever cause they have is something quite apart from him, and what he sees is separate from his mind. He cannot doubt his dream's reality, because he does not see the part he plays seem real. No one from a dream the world is dreaming for him. He becomes a part of someone else's dream. You know, this would apply to a lot of the anger and the frustration that you feel in terms of the world. It's like, how can I be the dreamer of the dream? And why am I, asking, why am I answering to my boss if I'm the dreamer of the dream, why am I going up, 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 <laughs> when he barks a command out? Why do I do I jump? Am I am I a part of his dream? He becomes a part of someone else's dream. And this is what I. The deeper I went into this, the more it was like there was a strong call, and I was seeing where well, I'm being called to a very high calling. But this is not going to be a calling where I'm going to be barking to her responding to anybody else's barks. And every time there would be even a little twinge of something in there, then I would I would see, wait a minute here, what am I doing? Am I the dreamer of the dream? It's kind of like um it's to take an example, you know, there there are, have been people that have worked with the course, studied the course, and um they start to make a livelihood out of the course, writing articles about the course. And then, after a while, they think, well, you know, it'd be nice to get more access or ha have my articles read by more people. So if I could just get an article in a national magazine on the course, oh, that would be good. So you go that steps, and then you have the editor of the national magazine <laughs> on the course, who has all his restrictions and requirements and deadlines, get this in, but I gotta have it in by such and such and this and that and this and that. And guess what? You're trying to be a teacher of God and you're still barking, you're still jumping when that editor calls up and goes, hey, I have gotta have this in by such and such. Postpone your vacation that you were gonna take with your wife if you want that article this issue. 
you know, I mean, that's just another example of how our path that we're, I mean, we're all being called to is not barking, not responding to the bark of someone else, to coming to a, a place like Tom was bringing up last night in our little session when the question was asked about relying on the Holy Spirit. If you're going to respond to a voice, respond to that voice. The deeper you go in this, the more you come to see, if I'm going to have a boss, why not make my only boss the Holy Spirit? But at the same time, I think it's helpful to think in terms of moving in that direction, yes. because if I'm not clear enough that the Holy Spirit is coming through loud and strong, I've got to take steps in that direction. For me, it came in the form of the last formal job I had. I did not have a boss standing over me, telling me what to do and asking me where I was going and what I was doing. I had a boss who said, do whatever you want, come and go as you please. I like everything you're doing, so just keep doing more of whatever you want to do. And so, I mean, in, for me, it was a symbol of you know, moving in that direction of having more autonomy and having more, um, you know, less of this external worldly voice telling me, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have these deadlines, that kind of thing. I, I made it all up myself. I mean, in the sense of this job, I mean, I, I set it all up. If there were any deadlines for things to be done, it was because I decided I wanted to do it. You know, so it wasn't anybody else stand, standing over me. And I, for me, that was a great symbol of moving in that direction. Um, but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think, I, I mean, what you're talking about is what we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. which not is necessarily, important. Yeah. which is very important. You have to articulate have to have, that. Yeah, and I have to have a clear view and keep remembering what it is I'm looking towards, what I'm moving towards, you know, so that I have that clearly in my mind all the time, but also to see where I perceive myself and say, you know, I, yes, I'm going to move in that direction, but as I perceive myself right now, I have to take steps. It seems that I'm taking steps in that direction. Yeah, even the idea of of consensus. I know a lot of people have wanted to just sit down. Some people do sit down with their bosses and really go into things mm -hmm. deeply. In some situations, it doesn't seem like that's an option. But I would say that that the messengers of peace, or the, when you come together for your logistical meetings to do what we're doing, that can be a very present symbol, so to speak, of what we're talking about here. And that's what that this is the model for that. 